We come to the throne, and I hear the angels sing and lift up their voice, and they said, Be still, be still, and know that I am the Oh, be still, and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Yes, so oh, well, welcome to another beautiful day. It's a day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice. And we are gladdening ourselves in it. We dance, we, we twirl, we turn around, we spin in the Holy Ghost. We jump up high. We rejoice, we release a shout unto the Lord. And we say, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall indeed rejoice and we shall be glad in it. So I declare over your lives this morning that... You will know God. You will see him. Project love into your atmosphere. We create the atmosphere of praise, the atmosphere of life, the atmosphere of love. That in all that you do, there will be a glorious manifestation of his praise and honor in everything, in your home, in your affairs, the affairs of your children. That because of you, the light and the life of God will shine forth in every place that you find yourself. Your estates will be glad because you are there, for you are a living altar, a trans an agency of transformation that God has granted. Yes, you are the you are the 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 oh, so she will want that again. Sorry about that. You are that which was inserted. Thank you, Father. Which was inserted in the lung that has leavened, that level that is, that is inserted in the lung that is leavened the whole lung. Yes. You can say that, oh, it's just me. Yes, you are all God needs, for he's looking for one man through whom he will show himself strong. He will do great exploits through you, with you, by you, for you, in the name of Jesus. That because of you, your neighbors will rejoice. People will get to know God, for you are an highway that the Lord has established. And his light, you are the lighthouse that he has planted through whom men will trail their way back to God in the name of Jesus. For just like Jesus, you have become the way, the truth, and the life. For you are Christ, we are Christ, and because we are Christ, we are sons. Therefore, wherever we are, we manifest 
as the glorious light through whom and the way that the Lord has positioned for men to find their way to him in the name of Jesus. Therefore, wherever you stand, truth is established. The voice of the Lord shall be heard. The name of the Lord shall be lifted and shall begin to resound over situations and circumstances in the name of Jesus. Because of you, healing will break out in the land. Because of you, restoration will come. You, for you are a glorious repairer. You are a restorer of the old waste places, a repairer of the broken down bridges. Therefore, whatsoever has been broken down, whether in your family, around you, in your business, today we decree and declare that it will begin to restoration comes in the name of Jesus. We, we, we thank God for the testimonies of the past, but today is a new day and we hear a very fresh and a glorious sound resounding over your life, resounding over your destiny, and we know that your destiny pathways are being straightened out. The crooked places are being made straight. The rough places are being made smooth, and the glory of the Lord is now being revealed wherever you are in the name of Yeshua Hamashad. You are blessed beyond any curse. There is no divination against you. There is no enchantment against you. For every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, by reason of the glory of the Lord that is upon you, you have condemned, you have the power to condemn. Therefore, they remain condemned in the name of Jesus. Every contention, every contention against you, the Lord himself, for he said, I will contend with him that contends with you. Therefore, today, he stands as a contender with those who gather themselves against you. He will contend with them. He said, you will hold your peace and I will fight for you. Therefore, in every battle, every battle array against you, today we decree and declare that the Lord himself, he will stand on your behalf and he will fight on your behalf in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. So the enemies that you see today, you will see them no more. Therefore, the Lord is standing to fight for you. And those who have been chasing after you, you will suddenly look around and you will find them no more in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. This is the, this is the glory of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord concerning you that, you will, that he has chosen to exalt you. He has exalted his name over your life. Therefore, everyone, every voice that is speaking against you, the Lord himself will respond to them. He will, re he will reply them. He will reply them. You will, you will hold your peace. God will fight for you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. It is on that note that we come and we resume today's broadcast, which he has given us a theme. And the theme of today is when God goes to war. <laughs> when God goes to war. And I'm going to start now. I was trying to tell a story yesterday, but I discovered that I couldn't tell it because God just took over. I believe God just took over my tongue yesterday and what I wanted to share, I couldn't share. And things, I don't know where that message came from. I mean, yeah, uh, not that I don't know. What I mean is it just took over completely. It was something that came straight from his throne. Um, it, the way I wanted to go about it wasn't the way it happened. It just changed everything. And it was such a beautiful one for me. You know, it was such a beautiful and wonderful experience. What we are going to do um, on Thursday, Thursday, we are going to have a special communion. So as a matter of fact, um, I was thinking that we'll start it from the month of um, July, but the Lord is saying we should do it starting from Thursday. So from Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be um, special dances, special days of three days of specials. Um, we'll be ending each day with communion. Then from the first, from July, make sure you have your communion. Every time you are coming, make sure you have your communion ready by your side because you'll be having communion because God is actually, you know, um, I was just meditating on the word, on what, um, what our sister shared yesterday, you know, when she saw the Lord placing a mark on everybody. And I just discovered that, oh, wow, the Lord is sealing his people, he's sealing the watchers, he's sealing those who had been signed, he's sealing those who had been signed um, because something is about to happen, is about to 
break out upon the earth realm. Judgment is coming. See, all those who have been perversing themselves. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? It was things like this when people begin to wallow in abominations. And they call, they call those abominations um, what, what is right, they call wrong. And what is wrong, they call right. See, when it got to that point, and the cry of the land, because what we don't know is that the earth responds to, to the atrocities that are being committed. The earth itself responds to it, and the earth will lift up its voice to cry to God. So when Jesus was saying that if you will not praise me, that God is able to raise up this stone to praise me, in the same way, when we refuse to, if you if you don't if you don't intercede, if you don't intercede to fix the earth, the earth itself will cry to God that we are we are under serious oppression, and there have been God subject. There is a place where God subjected the all operations to groaning. But there is also another place when the earth is begin to groan, the waters will groan, the trees will groan, the land will groan. That's why you see that when blood, when there's so much blood shed in the land, the blood within the earth begin to cry out to God. And guess what? The earth is beginning to groan under the pressure of all the perversities that are going on in it. And so I'm going to share what happened. I mentioned it yesterday, but I ended up not talking about it. But today, throughout the night, the Lord got me, woke me up and began to ask me that it was time. So I discovered if I shared it yesterday, actually, it actually it should have been a premature sharing because God, even now, I I on I thought I understood because I was part of the, the dream. I was part of the experience, so I thought that um, I understood everything, but the Lord began to show me even the implication and the kind of battle that we were engaged in. It was me, Apostle Babs, and one other um, warrior bride, um, the sister. Honestly, I thought I was seeing two faces at the same time. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was, um, Prophet Fanny, but again, I, I looked again and I began to see um, my sister, Nke, Nke Wankola, you know, and it was quite amazing the kind of battles that we were doing. And it wasn't just a battle within Nigeria. Maybe that was why I was seeing Nke because she represents a global um, operation. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that. Now, let me say this that the reason the Lord did not quite show me the face of a single sister is because there are, there are quite a number of people like what you guys are doing here every morning. You are involved in this battle. And it is not a battle. That, that is what made it very interesting. Now, when I started engaging my own battle, I did not even see what others were doing. But I only saw before the battle began we were we were on top of um we were on top of a battlement that's a war a war as watchmen and we all stood in our position that was the only time of course we were surrounded there were quite a number of people but the people that I recognized were those four faces right that's my I myself Apostle Babs uh then um you know the two ladies that i just mentioned now we all the kitten was something else see? that is why we should be careful when we are using when we are still looking at the the sword of the spirit right the sword of the spirit the the breastplate of righteousness the shield of faith um all of those things Remember that Paul was actually used those terminologies because, as at the time, he was using the Roman soldier to describe, to give them a picture of how we are kitted in the spirit. So, do not look at a Roman soldier. 
to think that that is the spiritual gadget or the spiritual kitten that you are kitted with. So when when you are looking at in, talking about defense, you are looking at uh, breastplate. How can you use breastplate? Breastplate to ward off. Uh, you know, um, there is something they have grades of of um, ammunition or bullets. They have grades. There's something they call the BICs. That is the military, the military grade of um, of of, of uh, bullets. Now there is yet an upgraded BICs. You know, then there is yet another one that is BI12. That is that one that one pierces through metals. Now, if it pierces through metals, not to mention even when you have a breastplate, which is usually made from something that looks like leather, all right, then some light steel. But except, of course, that breastplate is made by the gods. There are certain breastplates that were constructed by the god that no sword, just like certain swords that were made by the god and handed over. When you watch um, um, epic movies like, like um, there's this particular epic movie, like um, what's the name now? We have the Clash of the Titans. The sword was a very special one. We have another one also. Uh, even the even the the legend of the seeker, yeah, his sword also is a special one. All right, but there's another one also that was forged from a particular steel. That that yeah, Merlin is yes, Merlin is another one. But there's this other one that was forged from a special steel. The one of Merlin was actually forged by the dragon. All right, so such swords, they are different and even the breastplate and the armor because they are forged from a different realm so the, there is no material here that can actually penetrate such things because they are brought from a different is a different is a superior material that was used but if you are not so when you look at a typical roman soldier you know in the days of when they use sword, the Roman Empire, even even the Vatican right now, if they were to engage like they used to engage in those of the Crusaders when they were engaging in battle, that was actually how when 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 people say that Nigeria would be like um, if care is not taken, that Nigeria would be you know I fought that prophecy with all with with everything when they say that if if care is not taken. That God is warning. If God is not thinking that Nigeria will be like uh, Turkey, I said no. It's not possible. I said because the battle that was fought in Turkey is different from the kind of battle that we are engaging. Because they and their their bat, the battle they the battle they engaged in then was a physical battle, but we are engaging a spiritual warfare. You know that's that's the difference. The Crusaders. They were fighting with swords, with arrows, with bows, and all of that. But we are engaging in spiritual warfare. And if we understand the kind of battle that we are engaging, you'll find that we can actually disconfit and we can disarm whatsoever weapon. Just like during the when the Ukraine war started earlier. I don't know why, you know, sometimes I look at it and I regret, but maybe God just wanted us to divert certain things as at the time so that people. The innocent ones can actually find a place of escape and all of that. Otherwise, it would have been a great mayhem. But you see, the Lord took us there and we were diverting missile, <clears throat> missiles into the sea and all of that. How did we do that? I was in Nigeria. I was in Abuja. But the Lord would take us by night and by morning. By the time we do all the diversions and all of that, by morning, we turn on the TV and we'll be seeing it on the news. Everything we did out there, will be seeing it on the news. Our missiles were diverted how tankers were broken down and they could not advance any further and all of that. What was that? That is actually the supernatural us that we are, design we are designed. Just imagine if we all understood that the Ukraine-Russian war would have, would have ended since. Because 
the ability to go to the very roots where all of those things are being orchestrated because every war that happens, there are people who are gaining. Every time there is a war, there are people who are gaining. They are, there are masterminds and they are making a great deal of profit from it. Now, just imagine if you and I know, enter into those roots and begin to discomfit them. So they will surely gather, but the gathering is not by God because it is not God's pleasure that people begin to deal with themselves and shed innocent blood and all of that. However, we also know the mystery of the war, why God also permitted it, because the truth is that it is also a delay of certain events, certain globalization that must take place. But the Lord also used the Ukraine war to delay certain things. I don't want to go into that. We're not talking about what events today. Neither are we talking about prophetic things. I just wanted to bring out an aspect, you know, I want to disabuse our minds. Let's not limit ourselves to when you hear the sword of the spirit, it is greater, it is mightier than even, even um, what they call it, nuclear weapons and all of that. Some of you, you have the sword of the spirit, you have the word of God, but you, when you hear nuclear, that Russia is threatening to do nuclear, you're already fretting. And you're wondering, oh, so what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? Do you know why? That's because you really don't know what you carry in whom you dwell. When he said that you you are, see, you are a fortified city. Why? Because he they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, they will abide under the shadows of the Almighty. One thing you need to understand is see, there is a physical thing that is over 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 the space, the air space of Israel. It's called the Iron Dome. That I believe strongly that to those who were who invented that Iron Dome. They actually used the, 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 the wall that surrounds Jerusalem. So they used that to picture. He said, as the wall surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord encamps round about his people. So because of that, he said, I am your shield and your buckler. He said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. I believe they used that scripture in Psalm 91 to cast, to cast that particular thing. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. And my fortress, my God, in whom will I trust? So what they did was that they carried out the physical aspect and they create, they called it an iron doom. So even when missiles are coming, you'll find that they'll just they'll just be exploding in the air without dropping in the in the nation. Amen. Which means that's why you see that most of the bombs that have that have gone off in Israel happened within Israel, which means they were they were already they already entered inside the iron dome but anyone that they try to launch from the outside you will just see so even when they keep hitting a particular spot it's as if they keep renewing it meanwhile you go there you won't see anything amen so there is something about god that places a defense over you that is so strong amen so in this particular experience we were there and we carried, okay, that's what brought me to all of those explanations. And we were so kitted and the kitten, I have not seen, I've not seen any military. Even when we went to Israel and I, I, we saw that I was admiring their police, man. The kitten was just, I've not seen any police anywhere in the world that had been, that is so kitted, like the, the police in Israel. So I was admiring that, but you see, our, the kit we had on was so powerful. Then we had this particular, well, I don't know what the others have, but I had this particular that looked like a sickle, but very long. They, they, it looked like a spear, but not a spear. The end of it had a very sharp object looking like a sickle, and at the same time looking like um, um, there is a sharp end, then there's another sharp and I look like a hook on the lower side. So I saw I was kitted like that. Then we saw this, my goodness, the evil horde. They were countless. When you hear myras and myras, right? And I want to, and I, I looked, but instead of getting worried, I was getting excited. <laughs> it's like there is food. Like there were, I just felt there was food to eat. There was no fright. There was no fear. 
Instead, there was excitement. And it just reminded me of, you know, sometimes in those days when we were in secondary school and um, we sneak out to go to Benin, that was when the, the, the mobile police force was still mobile police force, you know, because they don't allow them out of the barracks. So whenever they were going to let them out of the barracks, they, they, there was this flag they put, so they, they call them kill and go, 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 you know. And the way they mobilize them, see the vehicle, once the alarm begins to blow sound, then the vehicle will be moving. You will see them. They are still dressing up and they are jumping inside the vehicle. So whoever jumps in are the ones who will go. So they were always, you will see the excitement because they are they are going out. They are going to, they are going to, they are going to carry out an operation, the excitement and the way they would drive and all of that. You know, those are the things that inspired. <laughs> the, yeah, those are things that those things, they were live movies for me. Those are the kind of things that inspired the way I drive today. All right. So see them the with the drive and yet they won't hit anything. My God, we'll be watching live movies. We're young then, teenagers. So we'll be getting very excited and all of that, you know? So, and that was the kind of feeling that I had in this experience. So when these guys began to come, I discovered, listen to this, I discovered that they were already defeated. I discovered that whilst we were there as watchers, connecting with the holy watchers in the heavenlies, which we are part of, I discovered that God already went to war. And he already beat them down. He already discomfited them. All we're doing, that was why I had that long instrument of war. And I discovered that you will see these chariots coming, galloping with full speed. And I would just get down, I would just pluck in off their heads. I was just pluck in off their head. I would just put that's I call it well, it looks like a sickle. Just put it down. I would just pluck in off their head, just like that. The victory was so sweet. The warfare, <laughs> the warfare was so sweet. And that was what I was doing. As a matter of fact, I remember that Thursday morning, I woke up and I was actually doing my hand like this because that was what I was doing through the night. All through that experience, I was just plucking off heads, disconnecting the heads from their shoulders. Amen. The heads of the enemies. And that is why I believe strongly today that that strong man that had been pursuing you that strong thing that I've been doing you. I stand between the porch and the altar this morning and I declare and declare over you that the head had been disconnected from the shoulder and from the head had been separated from the body of that particular strong man, strong thing, strong power in the name of Yeshua. Your pursuers will now begin to turn their backs against you. And even when they come, they are only coming because the Lord is teaching your hands to war. Because God, the day God went to war, every time God arises to go to war, that's why just make sure that you are connected in him. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. See, as I, you know, we kept on, there was not a single scratch. Whatever they were firing at us didn't even make any sense. You know, we were seeing fire, we were seeing everything, but we're not even worried, we're not even bothered. We just kept on going into the battle. We we're advancing into the battle. That is why there is no child of God. A son, a true son. The Lord was showing me that this is how we advance. This is how we move in the battle. So it does not matter the situation we are finding ourselves in this time and season. In any part of the world where we are, where we are joining in from, or where we would, those who we join in here and after, it does not matter where you are. The things happen around you. I bring you a sure sound and a sure word today that there is the, the, the God you serve, the one you know, the one who is called yod heh vav -He, the Lord of hosts, the, 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 the king and the Lord of the heaven's armies. 
He's already gone ahead of you and he has already finished the battle. Remember the other day when the Lord went to war <laughs> with, the, with the Moabites. The Moabites had oppressed and oppressed and oppressed and oppressed the children of Israel to the point that people could no longer get out of the city. There was no trade. There was no trade. Oh my God, there was no trade. The rumor that you are hearing that a time will come when, there, when you can't trade except you have a particular number, you have a particular identity, a particular ID, it didn't just begin now. As at that time, there was no trade. The, the city was strictly shut up. There was no food in the land. They fought, this one was human, human um, famine that was forced on the people, was forced on the nation of Israel. To the point that women began to eat their children. Oh, may we never see that day when you will look around and the only thing that is available for you to eat, not you. The only, the only thing that will be available for men to eat will be their children, God forbid that such a day would ever come. But it had come before. And that particular day, the king was taking a stroll and he had an argument going on between two women. Why are you not bringing your son? Why are you not bringing your child for us to, to serve or to cook, to boil and to eat after we ate mine yesterday? Ah! And the king said, what is going on here? And the one reported the other to the king. And the king rented his clothes, put ashes on himself. But look at the next thing he said. And I want you to understand this. He said, hmm, be it so unto me if I do not remove, disconnect the head of Elisha from his shoulders. Do you know why? Because that is whom they call the man of God. He is the priest. He is the watchman. He is the one who should be crying unto God to fix the system. And I want you to know that there is so much that is resting on your shoulders as a child of God. There is so much resting on you as a holy watcher that this morning dance that we are engaged in, the nations, they are looking up to you. They are looking up to me. So if anything goes wrong, the one that they will call upon is you and I. That is why a lot of the times when things are going wrong, the first one that feels it in their body, if you are truly a watcher, is you. And I said, when God is also about to do something, I'm even going to talk about the sign that was given unto us yesterday from the sun. You know, what was the strong word? If I were to ask, what was the strong word yesterday that came as we were closing? How many of us can remember? What is they represented? How many of us can remember? If you remember, just type in. Then I will, I will let you know whether you got it. Reward. Yes. God bless you. That yesterday was the beginning of reward. And you see the sign the halo that was around the sun. Every time you see a halo around the sun, the Lord is announcing something. And you see, it's not just a halo, it's actually a halo of the edge, you will see the rainbow. And they come, the, the sun actually speaks to the Gentiles. Just as the moon talks about, every time you see a sign around the moon, is talking about the nation of Israel. But when you see the sign around the sun, within the sun or by the sun, the sign of the sun, it is he's talking to the Gentiles, to the Gentile nations. And I believe strongly that the Lord gave us, that, that's why I wasn't surprised that it was people on the Yudokia platform that began to pick it and began to broadcast it. And somebody made a statement, and I love it. He says, such things do not escape the watchers. Such signs don't escape the watchers. 
It was a strong message. It was a strong pronouncement confirming the word that came yesterday that yesterday was the beginning of the reward of those who have been standing to keep watch. And another sign that came was a sign that the, the, what the Lord, the signal that the Lord gave us that he was marking. Now, let me give us the scripture to confirm that mark that was being placed. Ezekiel. I think, I think it's Ezekiel chapter 9. Is it? Sometimes I mistake them, either 9 or 13, where we're talking about the man with the ink horn. And, and they were, he was sending for the destroyers to go and destroy, utterly destroy everyone in the nation. Ezekiel 9, thank you. Now, but he now, but there was a man with the ink horn. So before the distress we go, he said the man with the ink horn should go and place a mark. Listen to the instruction. Place a mark on everyone that had been standing in the gap, that had been sighing. To sigh over the nation means that you've been weeping, you've been keeping a watch. That is what we've been doing every morning since the second of this year, the second of January this year. So this watch, do not think that it is not recognized in the heavens. And yesterday the Lord came, he said he was marking every single person on the platform, on all the platforms. And when you see God putting a mark, it's not just us, every other person in any place in the world where they have been keeping watch and they've been sighing, they've been crying for all the atrocities that have been committed on the earth realm. The Lord is recognizing them and he's putting a mark upon them. Once the seal is complete, that's, that mark is a seal. So that when the destroyer comes, that is why you don't have to be afraid. I say this again, you do not have to be afraid of the things that the enemy is doing because they cannot touch you. When they see that mark, they will pass over because they know that this one, that mark means this is untouchable. This has this, this seal is a seal of that makes you untouchable. I want you to say to yourself, I am untouchable. That mark that was placed on you is a seal that makes you untouchable. It makes your your household untouchable, it makes your business untouchable, it makes your finance untouchable. That is why you see that we are taking time. I don't have to be teaching every day. We should be praying, right? But the Lord is pumping knowledge into us so that you will know who you are. You will enter into the operations of your identity. See, sometimes when you come into the knowledge of who you are, there are certain prayers you won't even need to pray. Because you just think, oh, my identity tells me that this is already done. There are certain prayers I don't waste my energy praying. It's just like what I'm sharing with us now, the battle. Look at it. The battle has already been won. I am fighting from the point of victory, just disconnecting their heads. So they won't go and oppress any other person. So I'm disconnecting, separating their heads from their bodies. Oh, as I'm saying it now, that joy that I was feeling in that experience is coming back on me. And that is why I stand to decree and declare over somebody this morning that the Lord has strengthened your hand to the battle. And you are holding your peace. The Lord has already fought for you. All you are doing, you are appropriating the victory that the Lord wrought for you. You are disconnecting heads. You are plucking heads. You are plucking heads. And you are not bothered because even the arrows they are firing, they are firing from a blind, blind side. They are firing as defeated foes. You are just disconnecting heads and you are shutting down enemy, the enemy's camp. Now, like I said, that day when Elijah heard, Elijah was discussing with some people and said, can you see this wicked, this, 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 son of a wicked man. What he's planning, he wants to come and disconnect my head. So when those people that he's sending come, hold them. <laughs> and he dealt with them. Then he went to see the king. When he went to see the king, look at the announcement. Say, by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, 
While he was making that announcement, as soon as that word came out of his mouth, the Lord went to battle. God went to war. When God goes to war, there, all he needs to do is to set up a sound. When God goes to war, there is no, see, when you go to war, you will win some and lose some. But when God goes to war, he has never lost a battle. Do you know why? The battle is already finished even before he steps into the battle. That is why I am speaking to you this morning. That it does not matter how long you've been in that situation where you've been fighting. You say things are moving in your body. You say every time you pray, once you finish praying, things come to oppress you. Things are moving on your wall. Today, God is going to battle. God is, has stepped into that war on your behalf. I'm going to read certain scriptures. I'll read us a few, then I will send the orders to Rhoda so that she will post it on the various platforms. But I want you to know that the time and season that we are in, God has stepped into the war front. Amen. Look at this. Say, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And in, great, in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath, which consumed them like stubble. Exodus 15, 3 and 6. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war, which he is. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. I want to change all shall. He has prevailed against his enemies. Isaiah 42 verse 13. I will go before you and make the crooked path straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. Whatsoever it is that have been a hindrance, the Lord goes ahead to make, he will discomfit, defeat the enemy. Then he will undo the bands of kings so that they will relax so that you will come and raid them. See, when bands of kings are done, what it means that, oh, we are relaxing, there is no battle, we, we've come to the place of victory. In that moment, when, your, when those enemies, when they are rejoicing, that yes, we've taken over their lives. We've turned them into, we've made their lives miserable. That just when they are rejoicing is when the Lord will go. They will not know that God has already broken down everything that they put to shut you in. But the Lord, or to shut you in or shut you out, the Lord will go ahead of you. He will break every barrier. He will pull down every strong wall. Then he will say, now go and make a spoil of that city in the name of Jesus. So that's Isaiah 45 verse 2. Is it now, in another one, another Isaiah 52 verse 12 says, For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you. The Lord has gone before you. And the God of Israel will be your red guard. So he's ahead of you, he's also behind you. He watches ahead and is also guiding you onto the pathways that he has made for you in the name of Jesus. Therefore, therefore, understand today, the Lord your God is he who goes before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you. So you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. He goes before you as a consuming fire. Psalm 97, verse 3. He said, a fire goes before him to burn up all his enemies round about. Verse 5 says, 
the, the hills, they melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. I don't care what it is that I've been standing in front of you. I don't care what it is that I've been contending with you. Just know this morning that even as you step out today, a fire has already gone ahead of you to burn up all your enemies round about, everyone that have gathered themselves against you. They say, is village people. <laughs> Those village people, they will now encounter fire. Why? Because God is going to war. God has gone to war on your behalf and the victories have been wrought on your behalf. Therefore, from today, from today, I decree and declare that whether in the village, whether in the city, whether inside the water, whether on the mountaintop, we are in the trees, wherever in the air, where on the land, wherever it is that they are, whether within, even within your own home, everything that have been a source of contention against you, that have been withstanding you today in the name of Jesus, a fire goes before you to burn up all of them round about in the name of Jesus. They will begin to cry out one after the other. They will cry out one after the other. Everything that have limited your advancement into the place of your breakthrough, everything that have limited your advancement into the place of your divine manifestation, today, the Lord takes them out and he says, look, I have strengthened your hand unto the battle. You will hold your peace for I, the Lord, will fight for you. The Lord is gone to battle. He's gone to battle. He's gone to war. He's gone to war on your behalf. He's warring 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 on your behalf in the name of Yeshua. Every contention, everyone who named themselves contenders, and they are saying that they will stand. Let, they are saying, let us see how you will move. Let us see how you will go. Let us see how you will advance. They will see you riding on their heads to get into the place where the Lord has, has ordained for you to manifest in the name of Jesus. Your place shall not be cut short. Your glory shall not be dimmed. I say your glory shall not be dimmed. Your gold will not go dim, but your gold will begin to shine brighter, 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 and brighter until, until, the, until, the, until the new day, until the morning star in the name of Yeshua Hamashad, I decree and declare over your life, over your family, over the works of your hand, that that which men have said you will never attain. They will watch you as you not only attain, but you will go beyond the attainment. You will break to your right. You will break to your left. You will rise up. You will discomfit, you will press them down, and you will rise again, and you will yet press them down. You will rise again, and they will become stepping stones unto the very greatness that the Lord has ordained, where he marked for you to be expressed in the name of Jesus. Shall we just unmute our minds and pray Pray in the spirit? Let me just change over. Pray in the spirit. Come on. Pray. Oh, <laughs> He <laughs> 
Jesus name. Amen. So I wanted to understand this one thing this morning that God has stepped into the war, into the war front. He has stepped into the battle, and because He has stepped into your battle. Every contender against you, for you are the apple of God's eyes. Whoever touches you, touches God. Whoever contends with you, say, I will contend with those who contend with you. Say, I will bring them down. I will disconfix them. And you see, there are a lot of contentions. There is somebody who has been going through stuff. You'll be going through things. You'll be going through a season. I mean, years and years of oppression. But today, hear the word of the Lord. That God has gone to war on your behalf. And he says, I have empowered your hand and I have placed a divine sickle in your hand to disconnect the heads of all your contenders from your body, from their bodies. Now, listen to this. Every single person, every single image that I saw in that experience, none were human beings. And I want you to understand this. And I believe strongly that God took me through that experience and made me, because as I disconnected their head, I discovered that some of them had no bodies, but they, they were all kitted with unusual kind of, the kind of um, armory that they had on was different. I've not seen it in any epic movie. I've not seen it in any kind of, um, you know, the kind of war gadgets and equipment that they, they, they you know, they will usually so when they are talking about warfare and all of that. You know? So, but I was just disconnecting that. You will see them like this, and I will raise their head, and I will disconnect their heads and all of that. No blood, which means they were not the kind of, they were not flesh and blood. That's why the scripture says, my goodness, you know, it's so exciting to see that scriptures plays out even in our experiences. Our experiences are designed to confirm scriptures. Every experience you have, if it's not confirming scriptures, that is why the first thing you do when you have an experience, when you come out of an experience, when you have a dream, look for a script, use scriptures. Lay it side by side with scriptures and use scriptures. You will see the definition and the interpretation from scriptures. When the Bible said that we do not war against flesh and blood, honestly, there was no blood. I did not see any blood. So God was actually showing us that we are contending with, we are contending with powers. He's showing us the people that he has defeated. So the, the, the victory that we are appropriating is a victory from that realm. So the Lord actually permitted me to see the realms that we have entered. And where we are carrying out those warfare that begin to manifest as victories. That this thing happened on Thursday. And on Friday, that was we, we had a declaration. And from that Friday morning, there is a sister that said for years her dream gate shut down because someone she had a wonderful dream, which she, she talked about the dream, and it was a wonderful dream, but she met somebody who she believed was a prophet, but didn't know that the person was a diviner, and that was the end. Shut down her dream gates. Be careful the people that you meet for interpretations. Shut down her dream gates. And I don't know how many years, whether, whether for three years or so. Yeah, I think it's for three years. Shut down her dream gate for three years. 
But since that Friday, she's been having unusual instructive experiences. Do you know what is happening? And some of you have been having unusual testimonies, very unusual testimonies since that Friday. Why? Because there is a battle that had been carried out in the realms of the spirit. You limit yourself each time you see that uncle, each time you see that woman, each time you see your mother, each time you see your, 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 your auntie, and you are fighting them. You are limiting. The enemy is rejoicing over that warfare that you are engaging. He's rejoicing. I have learned to deal with enemies from the point of the spirit, from a realm where they cannot survive it in the physical. And that is why most of the time there are certain experiences. I'm going to, the Lord will give me the wisdom to pass this across. So I don't leave any wrong impression. There are certain experiences that people, people will share with me. I will deal with some things. I won't let them know that. And that is because a lot of the times when we point out human beings, and what they represent in experiences. The tendency is for our minds to hold on to that image. Listen, you can see faces, but I want you to look beyond the face because you are not, your warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against dominions, against thrones. Do you know what thrones are? Thrones are thrones. Dominion means controlling, controlling powers, controlling spirits. They take charge. They control, they manipulate. That is the kind of spirit that is ruling in the life of most of these billionaires. Is that evil dominion to take control, to subdue? When people will say they, they place themselves in the position of God to determine who lives and who dies, to determine who is how many percentage will be rich, how many percentage will be middle class, and how many percentage will be in the poor keda. So they will be using those ones as slaves. The, the, these are the people who say they that, that they put themselves in the position of God to say, we determine what continents, how far. A continent like Africa, we go. We must not allow them to do things differently. So that they will remain in the place of bondage. They will be our hewers of wood and our fetchers of water. Then the ones who have been able to do something differently will give them an assignment. So that they will become our slaves and our servants. They will become our agents that we use to hold their people in bondage. I'm giving you a description of what these powers. So when I want to deal with them, I will not deal with big gates. I will deal with the dominion, the power, the throne that is ruling and speaking over him. That is what Ezekiel 28 brings out. When he was talking about the king of Tyre, and all of a sudden, he began to talk about Lucifer. Because that's the one that is sitting on him to carry out the atrocities that, his, that, that he carried out. But we have a God. His name is yod hey bav -Hey. He is the great and mighty one, the man, the man of war. When The day he goes to war, Every time he goes to war, Satan goes to sleep because he knows that his boss is at war. That is why no matter how bold in an enemy is, they are only bold until God steps into the battle. Today, for someone who had been contending, you've been wallowing in one trouble, from one trouble to another, from one oppression to another, 
you've broken down in depression severally today. I bring you an announcement. I bring you Eudokia. Eudokia means good news. Eudokia means glad tidings. I bring you great news of great joy that God has gone to war on your behalf. God has gone to war on your behalf. God war went to war last night on your behalf. God is at war right now on your behalf. If you are that person, shout hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God. God has gone to war on your behalf. You have been contending. You have been, you have been going through stuff. You, you have wept through the night. You have been crying. You have been, you have been in a lonely place. You have felt so abandoned. You have felt forgotten. You have felt neglected. But today, I bring you an announcement that last night, God went to war on your behalf. This morning, God is warring on your behalf. Come on, it's a time to rejoice. It's a time to shout. It's a time to lift up the hands, swing around, leap for joy, because God is gone to war, for he declares over you, you are the apple of my eyes. You know, throughout yesterday, I was literally rendered redundant. I was literally useless. As soon as we finished the morning dance yesterday, I began to, it, I just knew something was wrong. I couldn't place my hand on it. And I was wondering, Lord, what's going on? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? I interceded for people. So those with, whoever is being oppressed with malaria, I interceded, but it simply was not going. My eyes began to go dim, and I was wondering, Lord, what's going on? The answer came in the night. The Lord said, when you were going through all you were going through, I was taking you with me to the war, to the battle. We were at war. He said, no wonder. It was really bad. When I say bad, it was really bad. <laughs> when, by the time I ate, oh my God, it's like my whole body. I began to say, why, why did I even bother eating? Because <laughs> it was as if I was even better before I ate food. I ate late, but it, it just didn't go well. It was as if even the food was reacting, was spoiling something. And the Lord began to speak through the night. Say, we were at war. Oh, God, we were at war. I speak unto your life. Where I am seated in the place of ascensions with Jehovah, I decree and declare that every contention Every hindrance, every resistance, every man, every woman that had been a tool in the hand of the enemy to stand against you, they are stripped of those powers. They are stripped of those powers. Their dominion is taken from them. The ability to manipulate is withdrawn from them because I saw that happening in the realm of the spirit. Something happened. And I found myself praying. I said, Lord, let them come. Honestly, I said, Lord, why didn't I know this when they called me? You know, when... I dealt with one of them, but I, the Lord began to tell me. You know, these people that we call, they will send, they will send you recharge cards. They know what they are doing. I want to leave this key with you today. 
<laughs> hey! I say, what? You know, it, you, when you know God, you just, there are, there are things, there's a way you know God, right? You'll be acting like a madman. A holy madman. I was seated, JJ, when the Lord brought this picture to me, took me back to when they sent Richard Carr to my phone. I dealt with them because I told them, I said, listen, do you, do you know who you are calling? But the Lord began to show me, he said, listen, the next time, and I know God is going to allow them, is going to permit them, is going to push them to pick my number again. You know what they do? When they send a charge card and then they will now call you that, oh, they made a mistake by sending the charge card to you. Please, can you send it to this number? They wanted to send it to this number, then you send it. Then they will now call you to thank you. Then later, they will now call you to say, my father wants to thank you because it's my father I sent it to. If you agree, then they will start, the man will start praying. Then he will start releasing incantations. After a while, he will now say, you go and bring water, put salt in the water and carry it on your head. Then they will not tell, at that point, they will make incantation that they will not tell the person that they are in a shrine and it's from the shrine they are blessing you. When they finish, if you mistakenly say amen to whatever they are saying, if you agree with them by saying amen, or you actually carry that pot on your head or anything. They did it to somebody who was living in my bus, but I'm like, oh God, if she was a small girl, I would have killed her that day. So with all you've learned, you mean these things can still affect you. That's when you live by the, in the spirit of fear. Fear is a major doorway through which the enemy enters into our lives. That is why whatever you do, do not make sure because he has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, boldness, and a sound mind. Those three things, love, boldness, sound mind. That's what he gave you. It is by that that you operate. A sound mind means, means that you will always be in charge. So you will reason out what they are saying. Does it make sense? How can somebody say, what is recharge card? That somebody will not say, I should put this in on my head. No, thank you. Go with your recharge card. But now, the Lord was teaching me, he said, it's time you begin to shut them down. He said, you shut that down. He said, but you didn't complete it. I said, oh, what was I supposed to do? He began to show me what I was supposed to do. And listen to this. The reason I'm sharing is so that in case it happens to anybody on this platform, you will come and share the testimony of how much, <laughs> how much they sent into your account. <laughs> Amen. The Lord began to show me, he said, they will call again, and I'm waiting. So when they do, say, listen to all the anger, but as they are doing it, reverse it with your priesthood. Reverse it with your priesthood. Let them carry upon their own heads what they are doing. And that was one of the warfare that happened that night. I discovered that as plucking up their head then, we began to redirect them. All of a sudden, they turned against themselves. And within a few minutes, the battle was over because they, they were destroying themselves, even to the point of the wheels of their chariots. They were literally removing, they scattered everything. What it means that the enemies that you see today, you will see them no more. That was when I began to understand and I understood what God did in the Red Sea. God actually released a higher agency. He called on, a, on, on some of the dominions. They started fighting themselves and they started removing the wheels. I saw how it, I, I just wonder, say, ah, is it not just that they should be fighting? What has the wheels of the chariots got to do with it? And the Lord began to show me, the, we are going to take that sometime. That day, I learned the mystery of the chariots. I learned the mystery of the chariots.
That which gives them speed, that which gives them confidence, that which, because a chariot, some are iron chariots, that's like the armor tank of this present day. So don't just destroy them, destroy that which gives them speed. So that they will be buried, they will be discomfited with their own chariot. Every one of their equipment is it languishes, it destroyed with them. That is why I speak over somebody this morning that every tool that has been used against you, every instrument that has been used against you, they will perish with the powers that drove those things in the name of Jesus. That is why you will search for them. You will see them no more. The, the, every one of your contenders, you will search for them. You will not see them again. And if the agencies, the vessels that they used, if they will not repent, then they will go with them. You will not pray for them to go with them, but you withdraw their power. You strip, you strip them of their power. Now, let me complete this. The Lord said, you said, they, said you reverse it so that the very words they are speaking will be landed on their own heads. And the Lord told me, he said, you, your power, the words of your power has, is, it, he said, it is designed to turn back it showed me a shield in the spirit. And I now began to understand why the Israeli, um, the Israeli, you know, we used to bring um, um, this, um, you know, bullet shield that policemen wear. My friend used to bring them in and he represented the company in Israel. They produce the best in the world. Now, while others will retain bullets, that of Israel will repel the bullets. I take that again. Why others will retain the bullets? That is why when they are shot at, you see that they fall down. Then after a while, they will even feel the pain. But that, the one that the, the Israelites manufacture, in fact, when we wanted to test it in Babbage, we had to tell those who, who were going to shoot that they also should put on the bulletproof vest because as they shoot, this particular vest is going to repel it. It won't retain the bullet, it will repel it. So it will go and hit the person that shot. Both the helmet and the, 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 the vest. Now, so the Lord began to show me, using that particular thing, what I just described now, using it to show me how the words that we speak, we have the power to repair the enemy's manipulation against them. It is not the back to send that kind of prayer that we pray. But you see, those words they are speaking, the Lord actually showed me the practical, and I'm just going to say it. He said, as they are speaking, you just speak in your authority that which you are speaking. Now, begin to operate in your own life. Begin to produce in your life that which you intended. Just the same way, when I release a blessing, he that waters shall be watered, right? When I give out, Give, and it shall be given unto you, full measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. That is why the scripture say that with the same measure that you met out, it shall be measured back unto you. When you stand on the operations of those decrees and scriptures, you can actually use them in such warfare to repair everything that is contrary to the word of God that has been spoken against you. What that taught me is sometimes when people are saying certain things, <laughs> oh, you see, what I learned last night is this. I began to feel sorry for those who will be blessing you 
You know, there are people who will bless you with their mouth, but they are, in their heart, they are cursing you. The Lord began to show me, say, that is why such people, they never progress, they never advance in life. I pray there is nobody here like that. I pray there is nobody that have grudge against anybody so that even when they say pray for one another, with your mouth you are praying, but with your heart you are saying the Lord will show you, the Lord will deal with you. The laborer shall be the first partaker of the fruit of the vine. If that is what you planted, you will be the first partaker of it. If there is anyone who had been doing that, it is witchcraft, repent of it. That is why we talk about purity. Let that's why we talk about projecting. That's why we've been teaching for some days that we learn to project love to one another. Oh, time is gone. Let me round up with this. So the Lord began to show me, he said, now when you do that, he said, everything they intended will begin to play out in their own lives. So when they tell you, because when they have finished all of those things, they will not say now. Um, go and bring all the money you have in your account. And they will tell you, I'm going to send you an account number, pay some money, pay money into it. If you ask them how much, they will say, how much do you have in your account? You tell them the amount, they will say, pay everything. Because what they were doing, those incantations were meant to hypnotize you. But you see, because you did not respond amen to it, instead, you were repelling it where you were standing, you were repelling it. Now, listen to this. If you decide, me, I will do it. When they will say, I'm sending an account number to you and I will listen to them when they now give their instruction. I'll say, now, you, I'm going to send you an account number. All the money you have collected from people I want to pay it into that account and put the names of the people that you collected it from. Every money, every time you collected, you have my phone number, so you are going to send the names of the people you collected money from, then you will send all the money in your account. How much do you have in your account when they mention you tell them to send? Listen, the Lord said they will do it. Because they are under your, they've come under your control, under your power, and you will, you can do with them whatsoever you want to do with them. Then ask them for their address, so that you will take policemen to go and arrest them. Then it's at the police station you cannot preach to them, preach salvation to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is your ordination. That is my ordination to fix the earth. It's time we begin to break evil powers. I'm glad I'm saying this on the air. So as many as we come in contact with this declaration, they will understand the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. I have seen young ladies that fell into, that fell victims. They call it one chance. And they will just speak something to them under hypnosis, under hypnosis, they will tell them to go and withdraw the money in the account. One met us on Sunday. I have a daughter that her own even lasted many months. She had to be borrowing money. And they even they will even ask you if you have neighbors that you can borrow from. This young girl had to borrow money, borrow money until she was owing millions. And she couldn't open up to anybody. Oh, I stand this morning to decree and declare that every power that was injected and projected into your life to siphon. Do you know that was the same thing that the Moabites were doing? That Gideon had to be hiding to process his wheat. I'm angry this morning and I stand in this holy wrath before the throne of Yahweh to decree and declare that every word that had been spoken into your realm 
to release the power of hypnosis against you so that you've been doing things and you can't explain why you are doing things the way you are doing them. Today, that power is not only broken, but it is reversed in the name of Jesus. Today, you will not, not only will you start recovering your life, but you will recover everything that was stolen from you in the name of Jesus. The fear factor is broken from off your life. Today, the love factor is established and you will begin to advance in greatness, in goodness, in the name of Jesus. There are some of you that anytime you come in contact with a deal, you will find that you always find yourself calling a particular person and the person end up doing that particular thing. It, it ends in the name of Jesus. Some of you, your business partners have been taking advantage of you because they know that you will not soil your hands. So they went to administer certain things. And every time you find that they are always, uh, they always have the advantage. Today, there is a turn around. I turn every contrary power around in the name of Jesus. There are people in your family that have been taking advantage of your heritage, your inheritance. Today, you will begin to enter into your inheritance and you will recover from them all that they have stolen from you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. You will prosper. Your prosperity begins to shine forth, begins to find expression in the name of Jesus. I speak unto that business that had been struggling, that had been going through stuff, that every time you're about to hit a major breakthrough, something will just happen and you will hear that they are awarded to another person. It comes to an end. You are a child of God. You are you are king. You are a prince. You are a noble. And you are the one, you reign in the kingdom of God. Therefore, the kingdom of God will prevail over every contrary circumstance in the name of Jesus. That which is due you will come to you. No man, no power will be able to withstand, to contend with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that every power that they have been using, every source they've been going today, from today, from today, they will come to beg you. Don't be surprised that people will start coming to plead with you because fire will start burning in their houses. Do you know why? Because they've been stripped of their own power. They've been stripped. They've been stripped. Why? In the realm of the spirit, we've already plucked off their heads. Everything that they had depended on, every altar, every power that have been ruling and reigning over them has been broken, has been broken and has been stripped from them. Today, they stand on their own. You stand with God. You stand with God. There are a lot of scriptures I can give you to confirm what I have said, but I'm going to post them on the platform. I'm going to post them on the platform. And as you read them, you begin to understand what I'm saying. The Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you. I decree and declare that from today, you will know what true prosperity is. You will not labor and another one comes to, 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 to reap. But you, the hands that worked it, will also eat, harvest it, and you will eat it in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Strengthen you in the inner man. Lift you up in the places where you have been experiencing a downtroddenness. Today, there is a lifting. Where you've been cast down, today we declare there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus. You will prosper in prosperity. You will know goodness. You will know greatness. You will know favor. You will see the hand of God working on your behalf. In every place you turn, men will see God working with you and working on your behalf. And they will say, wow, we thought you were never going to come back. But we have seen that God is with you. That will become a living testimony for you in the name of Jesus. Every offering that you have given, every seed you have sown, you will begin to see them sprout one after the other in every place that you turn. You begin to see your seed. They will sprout. They will sprout. Everyone will begin to speak. They will come to life. None shall die. None, none shall be unproductive. But every single one will produce life. And they will come in multiple fold in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you. Honor his son in your life. The Holy Spirit guide you into your place of divine manif express manifestation in the name of Jesus. Every gang up against you, you will see them with your own eyes, how they are scattering. They will begin to run when no man pursues in the name of Jesus. God bless you and honor his name in your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we come to the end of
this morning's broadcast. I pray that God will continue to strengthen you in all that you do and confirm his word in your life in Jesus' name. I love you all. Keep shining. Keep glowing. Keep glorifying his name wherever you are. Let the banner speak loud and speak clear in every place. For you are his chosen. You are his beloved. You are the apple of his eyes. He watches over you continuously. Whoever touches you, touches him. For he holds you close to his heart. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye. Amen.